So hello and welcome to another Valorant Tips and Tricks video. Today we're doing our map analysis of Icebox and how to attack Icebox. Uh, this one's going to be a little different to the other maps because Icebox is a bit of a peculiar map in quite a few ways and I know that some people think that certain parts of it should be reworked in some way but let's get into Icebox and how we can attack it. But before we do that, we must first talk about the meta agent comp. And this is the meta agent comp for Icebox. These four plus normally Reyna. Uh, some teams would go with Killjoy instead. Some teams might even go Raze potentially as well. But, you know, these four at the top here are essential. And then I think Reyna was the uh, next most picked as kind of the fifth option. I actually very much expect that Chamber will uh, come and fulfill that role for Reyna because I think Chamber will just give the same sort of benefits that Reyna does with extra added benefits as well. So I do think that this will become very standard. I should mention that Icebox is perhaps the most solidified of all the maps in terms of the meta with uh, these four being like 100% pretty much across uh, pro teams everyone seems to run these four agents on this map it's just widely accepted to be uh, the correct comp so with that said let's dive in and let's start looking at different ways that the attackers can go and uh, mainly for the attackers of course here we have three main ways it's a three lane map uh, for attackers to start out and then uh, the different choke points on the map are uh, probably here at B across this now in mid, this is obviously an interesting one because I guess you would maybe consider the tube, although you could put this choke point anywhere down the tube. You could probably consider this a choke point as well, perhaps. Like mid is a bit weird on this map where, you know, sort of def depends how the defenders want to defend it. You know, they could defend under the tube instead of like this area. So it kind of depends on what the defender is exactly doing. And then of course, across on A as well. And uh, what you might notice on why Icebox is a bit different to other maps is, uh, and maybe I should put one under tube here as well because that is a bit difficult to see, I guess, that you can go that way. But uh, what it makes Icebox very different to other maps is when we looked at other maps, uh, you know, often the choke points for the attackers are normally pretty standard. You know, they're just like one doorway, one entranceway with, you know, a, a space behind them. Icebox is quite different and this leads to teams attacking Icebox very differently as well and let me explain what I mean here because on Icebox pretty much unlike any other map and I think I've only said this for one entire choke point in the entirety of all the maps we've done so far and I'm pretty sure that was Cave on Breeze attacking A is it is absolutely fine and correct to just push full as a five stack and just go at one site with a full five stack. Normally I would say you always want you know in most other maps you want you know someone to explore other areas of the map gain some map control you know that kind of thing. Not always I should always say this that I don't mean every single round you should do that as you can catch your opponents off guard by just pushing as a five every so often once in a game. But I think your standard default setup should be that, you know, you want to take some map control first. You want to explore different areas. You want to have someone lurking who can maybe get free kills. That's the kind of thing that you should be aiming for on most maps. But Icebox is kind of different because you definitely can just full push a five into a site. And let me explain why that is possible on this map and isn't nearly as rewarding or successful on other maps. Okay, so let's assume that we are attacking the A bomb site and going towards A. Why is this choke point allowing us to push as a five stack rather than, you know, having to explore different options of the map? Well, essentially it comes down to, and I've mentioned this particularly on bind, how the choke points were very small and in confined areas. Now, what you'll notice about this choke point is that it is anything but small and it has both vertical elements to it as well, making it even bigger, really. And also, there isn't a confined space. This is a very large area for attackers to retreat back into. So it's no problem. There's no issue. You know, if someone sends a bit of utility, a Viper Molly, a Raze Grenade, something like that, that you might push you back, there's plenty of space for all five of you to be and live happily on ever after. Uh, and because of the vertical elements, you know, it's not just this choke point. It's not just the ground level that we're getting through here. You know, as I mentioned, there is the vertical element of, of uh, the side pillar that we can get onto here. There's the rope as well. And there's this push. So basically, there's kind of three different ways to get in through this choke point 
in one. And that means that, you know, you can spread yourselves across those three different ways to get in. And it's not just one choke point that the defenders are kind of defending. They're almost defending three different versions of the same choke point. It's in the same area, but it's almost like three different places to attack from. And that means that you can just send five people there and that's fine because you're not going to end up all bunched together in one and feeling like everyone get out of my way. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this. No, you'll be, you'll be evenly spread out across the three different ways that you could go in. And that will be handy a lot of the time. And so you might have, you know, you might have someone coming on the rope. You might have one person go in there. You might have two go on ground level and you might have one up here on the right hand side, sort of watching, covering that kind of thing as well. That can all happen and no one gets in each other's way. And that is really why you can afford to attack this site as a five. But the same is somewhat true, I would say to a lesser extent, but still somewhat true to B site as well. Maybe not the full five would go to B, but definitely four. But you can still send five and it wouldn't be too much of a problem. But again, it comes down to you have, you know, one lane, two lane, and you can get on the box as well, giving you sort of three lanes to attack from rather than just the one, meaning that people aren't getting in each other's way. And again, there is, you know, less space to maneuver back into, uh, but there is probably enough space. And again, the vertical elements mean that you're probably not going to be, you know, bombarded by utility that stops you from pushing that early on. Now, mid is quite interesting or maybe uninteresting in this map because it's not really a mid that you see explored a lot. Definitely not in terms of like actually pushing with multiple people. What you'll often find is that you will, well, if we're playing meta, it'll probably be a Viper Orb down on mid in here. And then basically, you know, if you watch the top teams, you know, Gambit come to mind on this on this map a lot for me. Basically, they will always send either 4A, 4B, and basically just have Nats, who plays Viper, you know, either go mid or defend the flank. That's pretty much all they do. Uh, and, <laughs> and it works very well. You know, that's what most teams do on this map most of the time, I would say. And that is how you really attack this map. Uh, because mid is kind of weird, and I know that a lot of people have said that they need to rework the B site. I'm actually kind of in the count that they need to rework mid, because mid just kind of feels like a place that a lot of teams don't go. And I know that in ranked games, you know, you'll often get this sage wall here, uh, down tube that stops you pushing there. You know, pro teams don't really do that, and yet still no one really explores tube, because unlike these, you know, big choke points that I just talked about, the tube is obviously is a very narrow choke point that if you do get, you know, Molid or stopped in any sort of way, you know, any sort of utility can stop you and you have nowhere to go. That's the thing. That's why this tube is still a bit of a death trap if anyone does know that you are coming up there at any point. You know, pushing out into kitchen, yes, you can catch people unawares and you'll get free kills, but if they are expecting it in any shape or form, it's probably going to be a very unfavorable fight because, again, they, they can be on this side of you and, you know, they can be a, a bunch of different angles as well ready to fight you. So, you know, it's probably not going to go your way a lot of the time. It might sometimes. And so unless you're doing this and catching someone by surprise, it's just not great. And the same is true for mid here. You know, the defenders have this great bit of protection on the ledge here. that They can basically just play it like a headshot only angle, which maybe at the pro level, you know, isn't that big of a deal because they'll hit heads a lot anyway. But, you know, at lower ranks, that's a problem. And that, again, I think is why people don't really explore mid. And it kind of becomes a bit of a problem because often, even if you do push through here and get to the, you'll often be like here and wondering, what am I going to do? And you kind of have to just like hope that you can time, you know, this wraparound correctly to where the defenders aren't looking at you, which maybe you'll be able to do. But again, it feels all very random and it feels like you aren't really in control that much of what you're doing and it doesn't feel great to have to do that. And kind of the same thing is true pushing under tube as well. You know, they can still, the defenders have these vertical elements that play in their favor on mid, but against their favor on the sites. And that is what I think it's really coming down to. Because if you push underneath tube, again, there's this, you know, pretty hard angle to have to flick up, but they could be lower as well. You know, you have to check both low and high. And then they can even see you from up high here or low here. It's, it's just a lot to have to deal with, you know, when you have to look all the way right, all the way left, and deal with vertical elements on both sides if you're pushing under tube. Like, that's, a, you know, that's four positions that are not going to be easy for you to just quickly flick and get a kill from if the defender can be in any of those four positions and be able to kill you. 
And again, this is a pretty narrow spot on the tube that you can go through and you can't really safely a lot of the time go back because then you might be caught by someone here. So it's kind of a bit like a, it's just a catch 22 of constant death pretty much in mid. And that is why I think personally they need to try and rework mid in some way to help, you know, make it a more interesting thing because it feels like the sites are too easy for the attackers and mid is too easy for the defenders. And that is what this map basically is. And there isn't too much really to say other than that. But now let's talk about once we've got site, what, what we're trying to do. Well, often on B, what you'll see is, uh, particularly at the pro level, is again, another sage wall just across here. Let's We're planting on B here. So we get the sage wall and it kind of is just cutting off the minimum amount of uh, space we need to be able to plant the spike. Uh, and, you know, this box obviously now cannot be pinged through either. And I think the hope that the devs had when they did that was that people would stop planting in that area and, you know, try and explore the rest of the site as well. But to be honest, there is no need. And, and I think pro teams would all agree that, you know, just planting here, putting up the sage wall across it, and then just everyone retreating out is still, you know, a, a better option than planting somewhere else because it's so hard for the attackers Say, you know, for instance, if we do plant, you know, back here, it's actually quite hard for the attackers to manage to, you know, have control maybe over the back of the site, which is probably what you'd want if you are planting in a spot like that. And, you know, it, it's very hard for the attackers to have control over the, the tube area and underneath tube if you want to plant somewhere like here. And so that's the reason that all pro teams pretty much plant in the same area, which is right by the box and, you know, just sage wall it across and then just everyone retreat out. You know, you have good control over the flank at this point. Hopefully in between yellow box and the different vertical angles you can play on here, you basically just hope to stall enough to be able to win. And this is pretty hard for the defenders to have to come and push out past this sage wall or out into here. You know, these are pretty wide open angles where they have nowhere to go. You know, that's the hope that the attackers play with. And so it led to, again, a pretty stale version of a post plan. And I would just say you might as well follow through with it. But if you are found yourself in, in a cool 1v1 situation or something like that, you are planting on B site. What I would say is if you do plant up high uh, somewhere like here in the open, can be seen by quite a few angles. And I have done this myself a couple of times where I'll plant here. And I know the defender is, you know, probably on A and probably around here and it's going to rotate. So what I'll do is I'll plant here and I will literally wrap all the way around and come all the way around. And by the time that they have checked, you know, the site and they've made sure, you know, that I'm not back here in yellow and I'm not back here, which, you know, they'll probably have to do and, and try and find me at least somewhat. You know, once they've done all of that and, you know, quickly checked that I'm not there, I've then got time to come here and you can see the spike from there. And I just thought it was worth pointing out that this is a pretty nice little plant spot and you can do some interesting plant spots on this map if you're in a 1v1. But if you're in a full 5v5, then just plant in the normal spot. Now on A site, we have seen some differences in plants. Sometimes you'll get a, a sage wall across here and, you know, the spike again will be planted in this tiny little corner. Uh, with just enough space, which is an interesting plan. Obviously, it gives the defenders a lot of room to sort of maneuver back into the site. You're giving, you know, all of this space pretty much back to them for free. But it is a pretty interesting plant spot. I think uh, this is a good one to do on save rounds uh, because generally on save rounds, you know, you want shorter angles. You want to be close combat because a lot of the weapons you'll be using will be better in, po in close combat, you know, unless you're a team full of marshals, which I wouldn't really advise you know, you're going to be better at, at short angles. And so by, you know, give them that space, it's fine. You want to play close combat anyway, because your guns are probably better at that than theirs. But then obviously there is the default plant. I think teams have tried to come off this default plant as much as they possibly can. And the reason for that is it, this default plant is not easy to see uh, for a lot of angles. Again, it's kind of similar to that Haven box. You know, a lot of the angles back here, uh, you know, where you're feeling safe and where you probably want to be going, or at least some of your team will be going, it's very difficult to see that plant. So a lot of pro teams have stopped doing that overall and instead will aim for, you know, more of a plant by the side of it, which can then be seen, you know, by angles like this. Uh, they then can see the spike and that will, you know, obviously potentially lend a, a win to your round. And also some pro teams have noted that planting, you know, right here at the top, uh, sort of on the end of the wire, uh, as you go to the top side, you know, what they'll do is they'll maybe sage wall across here to protect the planter and then plant here. And this can be seen by a ton of angles, uh, you know, anywhere from here, uh, you can probably just about see it from there. Obviously anywhere from here, you can even walk on this ledge on the edge and come to there. 
Uh, obviously, anything sort of down here can quickly peek out and, and take a look and swing as well. Same for anyone playing down here that wants to come up and take a swing. So this, I would say, is probably the best plan if you can get it. And funnily enough, it, again, if you come all the way back around and can get yourself towards like this kind of area, that can also see the spike if the Sage Wall is destroyed, which it probably would be by uh, the defenders. And one last note that I am going to point out, because this can be very fruitful for you, depending on the type of team that you are playing. If you've noticed, you know, because you will probably mostly four stack push a site, five stack push a site uh, on Icebox. If you've noticed that the defenders are very quickly flanking and pretty much always flanking you, you know, coming into your spawn uh, and coming around you, the back of you that way. There is plenty of what I would say is push with a four and have one player. Literally, there's plenty of good spots, whether it be back here. You know, you can tuck yourselves by these boxes. You can even just stay in spawn. And this is a free kill. You know, they ne no one ever, ever checks, you know, these angles. So, for instance, if they're coming from B to A, you want to be playing, you know, down here. Or you probably want to be playing on this side to give you cover. Because by the time that they're midway through, they're just thinking, I need to get here as quickly as possible. And they just won't check this. And the same is true, you know, if they're coming the other way around. What you want to do, again, is a similar thing, but on the opposite side. So you want to just be here uh, or here. And again, you'll pick them off for free. And it will be nice, easy, free kill. So if that is happening to you a lot, Make sure you play and just have one person play in these angles and they'll get a free kill. Uh, and that might help you win the round. And obviously once they've got that kill, then they can maybe go and explore different parts of the map as well in a post plan and try and pick off other people as well. But that pretty much is Icebox. Uh, not as much to say about Icebox as other maps. What I would say basically is, you know, push with a four stack a lot of the time. Use the different vertical angles to your advantage, you know utilize you know this part utilize the different verticality the different parts that you can be coming from don't all just push the same level or angle together push the different ones as much as you can you know be on vertical angles be on the different sides come from as many different angles as possible and you'll probably do pretty well hopefully get the spike down and pretty much play for post plan that's probably what this map has become a lot of the time